Good afternoon to you, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for July the 28th, 2016. Tropics starting to become more busy with each passing day. More areas of interest to start to watch now. National Hurricane Center outlining a pretty large area here, spreading out longitudinally from east to west here over the Atlantic, the tropical Atlantic into the southwest Atlantic. And then we have our area over here, 96L, closer to the southwest coast of Africa and the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, so what does all this mean? Well, I'll get into that throughout the rest of this discussion. In the Pacific, things calming down a little bit. Frank's just now a depression and will weaken into a remnant low as it moves on out and dissipates. Another area developing. This region has been so busy since it all began with Agatha several weeks ago now. Just one after another after another got all the way down to the G-Storm, Georgette. And this one has a pretty high probability of developing. And it, too, the good news is, will move on out towards the west-northwest, away from Mexico, uh, the Baja, etc. So no worries still for the Pacific coast of Mexico, despite all of this activity out there. So here's a nice colorized wide shot of the Atlantic Basin, the convective activity, or what we call thunderstorms. You can see that starting to blossom, even though this is in the southeast Pacific, Longitudinally speaking, I mean, this is between 80 and 90 degrees west longitude. For example, it would be basically Miami, Florida over to New Orleans if it was in the Atlantic. So I'm looking at this from a uh, longitudinal perspective. I've used that word a lot today, but what I'm pointing out is that the convection in the Western Hemisphere is the better way to put it here uh, is increasing. And so we remember it's just been empty all out through here lately but now we've got these huge clusters despite the fact that they're in the southeast Pacific it still counts as sort of starting to fire up here in the Western Hemisphere more and more and even off the coast of Africa nothing congealing yet and coming together and you can even see in this infrared shot and by the way what this shows is the colors of the cloud tops here at the upper end of the scale the cloud tops are colder because they reach higher into the atmosphere. So if I were to draw a thunderstorm, uh, this isn't exactly right, but let's say this is a huge thunderstorm in the atmosphere here, anvil at the top there, whatever, best I can do. These cloud tops up here at the top would be minus 70 degrees Celsius, and towards the bottom, much warmer. And this isn't to scale and probably not meteorologically accurate, but that's the idea is the lower down the scale we are here, the lower the cloud tops are uh, in the atmosphere. And conversely, at the top of the scale, those cloud tops reach very high into the atmosphere, and they get these colors assigned to them automatically through this wonderful computerization of the uh, satellite photo. So we can see where the upward motion is occurring, and all that convection or thunderstorm activity starting to percolate is that the word in the uh, in the Atlantic Basin? That is from the University of Wisconsin, as is this, and they have modified it, so it makes it a lot easier. It's a little bit more noisy, perhaps, with the colors, but I like it because we live in a world where green means go and red means stop, right? And in here, uh, we're looking at wind shear values, and let me just draw in yellow. This is the east coast of the U.S. There's the Carolinas, Florida the Gulf Coast, the Yucatan, Central America, South America, etc., right? And the west coast of Africa will be like way over here somewhere. All right, and there's the Greater Antilles. And so what we see, the green areas are indicating low wind shear values, which means favorable right there. So look out in the tropical Atlantic at what a large area of favorable upper-level winds we have. You do have sort of this... Uh, upper tropospheric trough carved out. That's the hard part about their reds, as I have to use. Maybe I'll have to come up with a different color, maybe a purple. Uh, but we do have this sort of troughiness carved out in here, cyclonic flow. But you have a big upper ridge sitting here with all that heat in the southeast. Fairly um, light winds in the Gulf of Mexico. A shear zone cutting through the Caribbean. And this time of year, the Caribbean is what we call the graveyard for tropical waves. If they have not developed by the time they enter the Caribbean, they usually do not do so until they come over into the Western Caribbean. And you can see why 
this is green, this is red, and it's all green out here in the open tropical Atlantic. So things are changing. They're not quite there yet. It's just like watching that big old pot waiting for it to boil. We've got the bubbles starting, you know, little ripples and convective activity in the water, and that's exactly what it is if you look at a pot of water starting to boil and you see these occasional waves come up. Uh, I mean, who has time to sit around watching pots boil, right? But we've all done it. You see it, and that's that convective um, rising motion in the water. It's fairly similar in the atmosphere, and part of that is instability, the vertical instability. Uh, we, if you're looking for hurricanes to develop, you like to see that instability level at least close to where it's climatologically supposed to be, and that's what this line is here that I've colored in red. And look at where we are today here at the end of July. It's as close as it's been to right near normal uh, in quite some time, okay? You see all these different, I mean, sometimes recently it was really below normal. But now that vertical instability number is going up. And for those that have been watching this stuff for the last several years especially, these numbers have been way down like this recently, okay? Very dry in the atmosphere, warm in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, not allowing the moist air at the surface to bubble up into it. And so this is almost where it needs to be, out in the tropical Atlantic. And once we shed this Saharan air layer even more, it's definitely eroding away. You can see that. It is not extending all the way out here, and just crushing the tropical waves down into the main development region. It's all letting up day after day as the pressures ease in the subtropics, uh, the subtropical high, easing off the gas pedal just a little bit is a good way to put it. And so that allows the convergence to happen down here. These tropical waves come off, they moisten the environment one at a time, and then the process starts to get going. And so while we might not have development, let me go back to this satellite shot here, maybe we don't get development out here per se, and something comes all the way across, but it happens later on because these seedlings are still going to be there. That's what really worries me, and other people have voiced that as well. And it makes sense if these tropical waves, these energy bundles out here, these pouches of energy as they're called, um, if they don't develop here, they don't just go away. So they come on through and maybe they start blossoming closer to land areas where you have Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, the Bahamas, and then, of course, the United States waiting on the western edge of the Atlantic Basin. So it's getting to be that time of year, and this right here, transitioning into something else I wanted to show you, is really, really, to me, astounding. And I don't use that word often. The sea surface temperature anomaly today from the Noah Nesdis site, right there, sea surface temperature anomaly, that simply means the departures from normal on this day Look at this, very warm in the main development region, right off the coast of Africa. Very, very warm, even more so in the Northwest Atlantic, Caribbean and Gulf. I mean, this is all set up for a very, very potentially tough part of the hurricane season to go, August, September, October. Notice too, and I'm gonna show you something in a moment, it's not very, very warm up here where this is cooler. The warmth is where you would expect to see it, down in the deep tropics, and so you don't have this sort of competing upward motion or energy spread out all over the Atlantic Basin. It's very warm where these seedlings come off, very warm where they're likely to end up, some of them. So it's concerning. Added to that, the eastern Pacific cooling off a little bit more with this upwelling and the easterly trade winds blasting through here, the La Nina state trying to come on board, uh, we've eroded the sea surface temperatures to a, a certain de extent uh, over in the eastern Pacific main development region, as some people call it, through all the tropical activity there. And I just think it's setting up for one heck of an August, September, and October. Not necessarily a whole bunch of hurricanes out there, but an average amount that could be really intense because we do have all this very warm water. Compare it to last year, oh my goodness, I mean, this is just incredible. The main development region through the Caribbean was generally colder than it should be. Very warm water up here in the subtropics, cold as all get out in the far northern Atlantic, and then, of course, this amazing warmth of the tropical Pacific that we had, that incredible El Nino, and you just look at that juxtaposition 
the contrast of the two really is astounding. And you want to see something else? This is this date roughly, 26th of July, close enough, 2005. Remember that season? This is the upper ocean heat content. And remember, these values through here are the high values, right? This is what it looks like today. I mean, wow, what a difference. This is the biggest hurricane season we've had in modern history. This is the upper ocean heat content today. Unbelievable deep energy in the ocean here off the Carolinas in the southeast. Uh, I, you know, I can't say enough about it. It is definitely uh, loaded for bear, as Joe Bastardi says. Um, barring that from him, I know he didn't come up with that, but he says it often. And it is true. And if you look at the actual sea surface temperatures, this just continues to boggle my mind. I mean, look at this 30 degrees Celsius isotherms, little islands in here of 30 sea water right there, as far north as 38 degrees latitude. That's incredible. And then the 26 degrees Celsius isotherm, which is roughly what you need to sustain activity, looks like it's about right there. And that, folks, is less than 200 miles south of one of the biggest population centers in the Western Hemisphere. So, if not the biggest, New England, New York, etc. Just something to think about, and it's only late July. And I say this because I want to motivate people to, you know, start thinking about it again. You know, it's been a while since we've had a significant hurricane impact. you got to think about preparedness and be ready if something comes up. With all of this warm water around, warmer than it should be, there is tremendous amounts of extra energy available. I wish that I knew for sure if something was going to happen or if it wasn't, I, was gonna, I would tell you. Believe me, I don't know, but I see this and I say, okay, look, the potential is there to have something really devastating come along. And if it does, trust me, you need to be ready for it. So hopefully this motivates you. I don't want to instill fear. That's not helpful at all because fear becomes irrational and without any educational base or explanation to it it's not helpful but motivating people because of the signs that we see I think can be helpful because all of this is waiting for possibly something to come along all right well that's it for me for today uh, as always thanks for tuning in whether you're watching on YouTube or our app hurricane impact it's all about the impact in the end right uh, that's available on the App Store and Google Play. These videos are posted to that as well the instant that I publish them to YouTube. Either way you're watching, I do appreciate it. I am Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.